Now, one of my favorite things about Ableton is the Ableton API. And an API is basically a way of communicating with software. It's a, it's a bunch of scripts that allow us to, to tell the program to sort of what to do. So, um, for example, this is used by MIDI controllers to, let's say you have a push controller and um, if you have that and you go in here in the preferences and you can select your control surface, or uh, let's say we have a uh, oxygen, whatever, and then we set the input to our controller and it, it will do certain things when we push certain buttons. Now, where we can find those scripts is if we go into Applications on Mac and we right-click on Ableton and we say Show Package Contents, Contents, um, App Resources, Mini Remote Scripts. This is the same list that you can see there inside Ableton. Now, um, to use this, normally you would need to know Python, the programming language, which um, can be quite tricky and it definitely takes takes time to sort of learn all that. There is however an easier way. Um, somebody um, named Stray has made a set of scripts that we can very easily use. It's, it's called CliffXD program and we can download it right here. I'll put the link in the video. Um, if you download that it will give you a folder, a zipped, zipped folder, this one right here. And if we unpack that, we get all these files. So we get a manual on how to use it, we get an Ableton example project, and we get the actual scripts. So these are all Python scripts. So we can open one, and um, if you're not familiar, this looks very tricky probably. Luckily, we don't have to use anything of that. The only thing we need to do for now is we take this folder and we drag it to that folder um, inside our applications. So again, that is um, applications and then right click on Ableton, show package contents and then go to this directory. So we just need to throw that in there. It's already in there, so I'm gonna replace it. Now, if we restart Ableton, and um, we can actually take a look at the folder right there um, and start it up. You can see that new scripts, it looks like new scripts get added. These are actually um, these uh, sort of human readable files being compiled to Python files. So you can see in the extension that these are all called .py, which means that we can open them and read them. And the other versions that Ableton creates are compiled. We cannot, we cannot see or edit those. Basically, Ableton knows how to take these scripts that we can type and put them into something in a format that, that it can use. So now if we go into our preferences again, and we take a look at the list there, we should see the folder that we put in there. It's called Cliffix, so it should be up here. Um, there we go. So now by selecting that as our control surface, we can um, we can use those clips. We just need to tell it what to do still. So for that, if we open the manual, we can see that we have a whole list of actions, as they're called. And all of these actions have a name, and we can use that name to tell to do that specific action. So for example, um, clip loop right here will turn off um, the clip loop button. So let's try that. We have a empty MIDI clip right here. And I'm going to I'm going to tell that action by typing the clip name. So the first thing I have to do is have an opening bracket and a closing bracket. So those are the, the square brackets. So that tells the script to pay attention to what I'm typing here. And after that I'll put the name of the action, so in this case, clip loop. Now, if I trigger this clip, you can see that the loop goes on and off. So this is already working, that's beautiful. Another example would be uh, bracket, test, closing bracket, metro, which should switch on the metronome. And it does that. 
So this is beautiful. We can and we can use this for a lot of interesting things. If we were to use it inside a project, for example, we can uh, set up our song and then we can let these clips listen to follow actions. So let's say we're we're playing this scene and. Um, let's say we have a follow action assigned that after that it will it will go to this next clip and turn the metronome on. It sort of starts to do things automatically that way. So a follow action you can find them right here. So let's say here we have a melody, um, which is just an empty clip, has some MIDI notes in it, and let's say for the uh, we, let's say we set, give it a follow action of one. So after we have played this, we want to switch on the metronome. can see it automatically um, automatically does that well there are a lot more useful actions in here for example we can clear all the envelopes from the clip that's a nice one we can change the gain of the clip we can delete all the notes so that, that's an interesting one let's try that so let's say we we're performing live we've recorded a melody live as well um, and now we go to the next scene if we want to clear all our recording so we, we sort of start fresh for the next time we can use that action so again we start with those brackets and then we just say clip notes delete and as soon as I trigger that it should remove the notes from the clip and that worked beautifully so let's try that again here are the notes um, everything is off and as soon as I trigger it it removes the notes this is the first very basic way of using this. But let's say you don't want to use these clips. You actually have a MIDI controller and you want to use your MIDI controller to control this. So let's take a look at how to do that.